I had some questions like on the technical implementations maybe of that because I'm I'm curious. I've not worked with uh, sheet metal myself, but I've heard yeah. that it has its uh, complexities, especially for vision systems and in many aspects. So I'm curious and, and maybe to expand for the listeners also, what kind of a process it takes to figure out some of these I want to say like alternatives, right? Because I'm assuming the manufacturer said like, we're going to present you the nicest bin. It's always going to be square. It's always going to be the same location. And then at some point you have to educate them. Hey, this is not necessarily, this is going to be too much variation. So we're going to have to inspect with a vision system. And it's going to add in uh, like, first of all, a cost, but also like an integration. And then the second like, point that you've also mentioned is the whole picking up with suction cups versus like grippers versus maybe like magnets. So I'm curious as you go through the process of iteration, what do those conversations even look like with the customers, but also how do you make maybe some of those critical decisions for the process? Yeah, you're right. It's definitely an education process because that's one of the major uh, issues that we run into when we go from a, a manual process to a semi-automated is really educating the customer on that process because the way it has been done for probably a long time is just a product is brought over, a person just picks it up. In this case, with, with the sheet metal, it doesn't really matter how it's laying there. It doesn't really matter exactly where the pallet is because somebody knows can just come over there and I can pick it up. And we did run into some of those situations where we were told, hey, our pallets are all the same. Everything comes in the same. Well, then come to find out it's not, right? So it was some time spent and we really try to help out that situation by utilizing technology again. So we made sure the vision system that we selected had the ability to not only see where the part is, but also, you know, make those adjustments. So if a pallet's not in the right location, or maybe the pallet was a little bigger, a little longer than what it's supposed to be, and the product is not sitting exactly where it is, that we're still able to utilize the uh, technology to do that. Now, it did take some time to tune all that in because when you go into the project initially, like you'd said, the expectation is, oh, the pallet's going to be the same. Everything's going to be like this. And then how the sheet metal is stacked down there in a perfect world, we were told to stack this way, but of course, something's hanging off one end too much. And then the vision can't really see it because it has more bends. So there was some of that education, um, but I think that's really part of the um, going from a manual to semi-automated is that you work with the customers and you have this education and usually you can work through it, whether it's going to be, maybe they change a little bit of their process. They might have to modify something for now, not now how that is actually being presented to the robot, or we can use technology. Like I mentioned, we can put something in place to compensate for that. So there's a dual role that you can do. You can either, oh, the customer may, might say, I can't really change that. It has to be like that. And that's where we can say, okay, let's look at changing the, maybe the vision system. We're doing something a little different to make up for that.